So I've been meaning to do this for a while, and I have to kind of drag my feet on it. Also, there's been a little bit of scope creep, uh, but I did finally basically finishing setting up my little retro computer displays and everything. Not all of them, but you'll kind of understand why once I show you what's going on. Anyway, without further ado, quick overview, you gotta kind of get a feel for it. That's basically it. I, it took me, what, eight, nine months to basically do this, but like I said, there was some scope creep involved here. So we'll take a quick look at the gaming PC one more time to, so you can see the final setup, and then we'll take a closer look at the stuff you actually came here to see. So just off to this side here is my work setup, so I can't really show that off or anything, but that's fine because we don't care about that. So this is the final setup here. Sorry, there's a little bit of flicker here. There's a slight mismatch in the uh, shutter speed and all that, so. But that's my basic setup. This is the piece that I built about a year ago. Do my editing on there, some light PC gaming, things like that. A little bit of shameless promotion, so there's something on screen. That's new since you guys saw this setup, uh, as well as that little keypad there. I picked that up. Uh, on Newegg via the TikTok shop, they had Black Friday special. Normally, I think 160, I got it for 80, 1080p screen, but it does 165 hertz, so that's pretty cool. I also then picked up this little keypad here. It's just a generic one you get in AliExpress. I haven't set it up yet because the software is kind of weird. We'll just leave it at that. So, but yeah, uh, you've already seen this set up a few times, so we won't go too much into it. There is a Nice little super tall monitor stand so I could put that on top. Really didn't have any other place to put it. I really didn't need the monitor, but I figured for 80 bucks to get myself a nice screen. Initial thought was just put that in this TV's place because a uh, 4K TV, it's giant, but at the same time, it's 4K, nice big screen. So eh, we'll keep it and we'll use that as a secondary. So that chair I've had for a while, that's the old PC. I just left it down there because I don't really have room for anything anywhere right now. So. I also got this nice little hexagon LED thing. You do different patterns, colors, etc. I just got that just to put something on that wall there. All right, enough of the modern stuff. Well, let's look at the retro stuff is what you really came here for. So up here, I just got some display shelves. I have a fourth shell. I just didn't feel a need to put it up there. I just put some knickknacks, things like that. That tin is a recreation. Actually, it's just a print of the one of the original ads for the original Macintosh. It's actually not super high quality. If you get close, you can kind of see it's a little pixelated and blurry. They didn't do a great job with it, but from far away, you can't tell, so who cares? There's the Lego, not Lego Mac that I put together. And then I got this here, the little not Mac keycap, as well as uh, my iPod Nano. So uh, down here, I don't have them turned on because I don't want too much power drain. Getting a little warm again and these things generate heat, so I just have one on, but they all do work. I'm at G3, as well as a little placard for it. The G4 and a placard, as well as a G5 and its own placard too. And I've got the wireless keyboard out, hooked up just to the uh, G5, since so that's the only one that has Bluetooth. Down here, I've got the Power Mac G4 tower. It's the only spot I could put it. And then uh, some additional storage and things like that, so. Take a closer look at each one of these individually just so you can get a better look later. Uh, over here, I have really nothing but a couple of boxes of software and some fake plants and other stuff, but that's a display that supports 15 kilohertz, so it'll probably stay in that area there for now. I do intend to put PCs over here. I do have the IBM 5150 that I have to finish refurbishing, and I have now two Packard Bells, one 46, which is probably not salvageable, at least not by me, we'll see. I got some plans and options for that one possibly. And then I got the one my friend recently gave me, the Pentium 75. So those will probably end up going up here, especially once I can find appropriate monitors for them. Down here, just miscellaneous storage. I got some jewel case software there, some not so boxed software there, just some storage. And these shelves, drawers I should say, have just cables, uh, random parts, things like that, just to 
keep everything nice and tidy and organized. So uh, let's take a look here at this shelf, which has all of the keyboard style computers, wedge computers. Uh, I've got this random spotlight just to shine on the Amiga. Otherwise, I've got these little puck lights that are illuminating everything else. And again, some random plants and things like that. So we've got the Amiga 500 there. Again, it's got its own placard. There's the C64. There's the uh, Atari 520ST. And then, of course, way down here, a boxed TI-99-4A that was practically new in box. So this was a couple of cartridges for them. And again, some storage there for all of the accessories and everything that these guys require. So next, we'll take a look at this setup. You guys have seen this one kind of demoed a few times because uh, we were doing stuff with the NEC PC. A lot of stuff for Windows on Wednesday, things like that. This was originally here but I got its own separate desk just because I'm gonna be using it a lot more like that. I can always swap that out with another computer for different demonstrations and things like that. But we've already seen this plenty of times. We won't go too much into it, but I will do a little closer dive like I will with the Macs and everything. And then here I've got, this is last but not least, a shelf with some extra drawers for storage. This has the PowerBook 3400C, the MacBook 1.1, some miscellaneous boxes to kind of act as support for these magazines that I found because they're pretty heavy. This is not their permanent home. This is just there for now. But I've got, you know, an Unreal Tournament guidebook here. Uh, I forgot where I got it from. I've got uh, games for Windows as well as a uh, TechNet subscription and then some miscellaneous copies of PC Magazine. So, yeah, it's not super complicated or complex or anything, but it did take me a while because I kept getting ideas and ideas and at some point I was like just stop finish this thing for now and then you can always go on later so uh, my thoughts behind this was just to put stuff out have it on display because what's the fun if it's just gonna be sitting you know on a shelf in a room somewhere like a closet or like in the basement or even just out of the way uh, what's the point you know so I decided to just get everything set up I know a couple of people asked on I think it was either Twitter or threads like what's the point of all this just a hobby it's just a collection you know people are going to show off you know their coin collection their stamp collection so why can't i show off my computer collection right got a game room might as well have a computer room too now of course these aren't all the computers i've got i still have a 2006 or 2007 uh mac pro that i got to refurbish i still have to finish that mac se and i also like i said have the ibm 5150 and two packard bells that have to be completed i don't know what i'm gonna do with the mac pro because i don't have a spot for it but this is what I went with, uh, you know, these tables, kind of like a theme, this like rustic brown, not even sure what color you would call it, but that's, it shows up as rustic in a lot of the listings. So they're kind of thin, flimsy, a um, little bit of flex there, but they're sufficient. That's one of the reasons why I got the G3 in the corner there. I should technically have this in this corner here because of how heavy it is, but it would look weird having a three, then a five, then a four. So I'm just leaving like this, it's it's enough. Uh, this desk is slightly different than those because these cost about 50 some odd dollars a piece. So I'm able to find this one for 40, it's basically the same, different frame, but this also has some flex to it. And I'm kind of concerned if I ever do actually find the appropriate CRT for the NEC PC. First of all, it's not gonna fit right. And second of all, it's gonna be kind of heavy not quite sure what to do about that so yeah so i mean they're flimsy but they'll they'll do the task i really wish i could have found more of this style desk it's got this nice one inch thick top which on its own is sturdy but it's also supported by this two inch by like one inch beam and the legs on this thing are basically two inch by two inch so it's nice and sturdy and that's on top of the fact that there's also these little angled brackets that add a little bit more support in each corner uh, when I got this desk in 2018, 2019, it was like 50 bucks, so less than these cheap things. But the price of these types of desks have skyrocketed to well over $100, $150, sometimes $200. I would have loved to have found these, though, uh, just because they are nice and sturdy and everything. But it is what it is, you know, you got to just make do. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so I just went with this particular color scheme just because I think it looked neat and it would kind of match a little bit with the red walls. Warm white lights. I got LED strips back here, back here, and back here. So we got some puck lights here. I got the little, just a desk lamp shining on the Amiga there. 
and I got a couple more. These uh, wireless battery rechargeable puck lights. They're magnetic. I can also change the color. They're not just white. They can also different colors and things like that. But since everything else with the retro stuff is white, I figured I'd leave it as is. No light down here because there's no point. Uh, like I said, I went with this here just to put something on that wall and it kind of then transitions from old to new, you know? Nothing fancy. So yeah, what I'll do now is I'll just do a closer shot of each individual computer so you guys can take a better look at it and everything. Go over the placards so you can see the specs and any repairs or changes I made to them. And then we'll wrap it up. So start with the G3, you know, just an iMac G3. It's a graphite. It's a December 2000 a digital video edition because it's got the FireWire ports on there. And, you know, there's the specs right there and some of the things that I've done to it. Nothing fancy. Replaced the hard drive. So replaced the speakers. Replaced the optical drive because it wasn't working. PRAM battery, of course. And you may have also noticed that it's got some cracks in the inner bezel. That's known. Uh, it uses ABS plastic, which because of the bromides inside becomes really brittle. I did do the uh, Kickstarter for the Mac effects replacement. That seems to be going well. Hopefully we'll have them in our hands in the next couple of months or so. So keep an out for that project there. So here we've got the G4. This is the 17 inch widescreen model. I do have a 15 inch 4x3 version or maybe it's 5x4. Still waiting for repairs on that one. That's the one where the display just kind of fizzles out after a while and I'm not sure if it's the internal connector, the LCD panel. I know it's not the machine itself because if I hook it up to an external display, it works fine. So but yeah, there's that as well as, of course, its classic base there. Let's take a look at the card. Of course, all the specs and what I did to it. I replaced the hard drive, the CFT ID adapter, because that's what you do. I upgraded the RAM to 768. I think that's all I had on hand in it. That might even be the max. I'm not sure. Upgraded it to uh, OS 10, 10.5.8, and replaced the PRAM battery, of course. I don't have a repair video on this one or anything because I did this before I started the channel. Though I did feature this in one of my early videos after the fact, so if you want to see that, you can go and do that. Maybe I'll even link videos in the description to each one that it applies to. So let's go to the next one. And of course, this is the iMac G5. It is the first gen because it doesn't have eyesight or anything like that. And, you know, just got the iconic little aluminum base. And this basic iMac design has lasted even up until this day. Sure, there's been some aesthetic changes. Now you've got them in color and thinner and things like that. But overall, this basic design has been here since this model. So, and of course, the specs and everything, as well as I've replaced it with a 250 gig SATA SSD. Upgraded the RAM to two gigs, which I'm 99% sure is the max on this one. Uh, also upgraded to 1058 and replaced the PRAM battery. And I should have a video on this one somewhere as well. And this one's gonna be difficult to capture because that's on the floor, but that's the G4 tower. Did some work on that. I have the box for it as well as the manuals and the original keyboard and mouse. So the keyboard is disassembled because it doesn't work. And I don't know if I can fix it. We'll see. Um, so there's that. And let's look at the card here. And again, the specs there as well as, you know, the work that I did to it. I also had to do a modification to an ATX power supply because the original one that came with this doesn't work, wasn't able to get it to work. So I won't be able to do any uh, Apple displays that require the Apple display connector because they require 28 volts coming from here. I could probably get this to produce 28 volts, but I am not an electrical engineer and I'm not going to attempt that, but there's probably ways to do it. But it's fine because the card also has a VGA out, so I can always hook it up to a, another display. And let's move on to the other side of the room here. For these, I'm going to go tripod list because it's just easier. So here we've got the Mega 500 as well as the only box software that I've got for it, actually the only piece of software that I have that isn't uh, on a, a, a USB drive for the GoTech, and that is Wayne Gretzky Hockey. Got that at a local game store. So haven't really done much with this in a while. I do need to address the display there, replace it with an OLED and put it in a appropriate bracket, but that'll be in the future. And then here's the placard here. Next, we have the C64. I have one more of these that I'm still in the process of trying to figure out how to get to work. It just keeps, every time I get close, something else happens with it and I'm just not sure what to do. And, and unfortunately, I'm not the first person that's had my hands in it. The last owner also tried to repair and 
obviously wasn't able to do anything with it, so I picked it up, hoping that I could get it to work, and I haven't yet, but I'm not giving up. But this one does work. I uh, also haven't used it too much except for swapping parts out with the one that's broken so I can try to see what's going on. Uh, I do have a user's guide for it that I picked up at a local retro game, retro computer software store, so that was kind of neat to find. And then, of course, placard here, as well as the repairs and stuff that I did with it. So the uh, Gal 20 V8 mod, I just picked one up online. I don't have a way to program them. But the uh, PLA itself was dead, so I went ahead and got that one. And then, of course, below that is the Atari 520ST that I featured not too long ago. Uh, it's in good shape. It works. I was really happy that I got it working and everything. And what's that? Oh, yeah, it's another copy of Wayne Gretzky Hockey, because why not? I was really lucky to find that. That's actually, I believe, from the same game store that I got uh, this copy from. So go figure. And then here is the info card. And then last but not least, it's a boxed TI-99-4A. And as I said before, when I got it, I was not expecting that it was basically in brand new condition. Almost everything was still wrapped and it didn't even look like it had been used. So my guess is someone bought it and just shoved it in a closet or something and forgot about it. And then there's the information for that. I think I won't spend too much time on this because you guys all know about this, but this is my NEC Ready 7610. Basically our family's first computer. This one I was able to find on eBay. And I was really lucky because it's not like NEC was a huge popular brand. Good company and everything. But the odds of finding a 7610 were very low and I found it so I grabbed it. Paid more than I needed to, but whatever. There are other readies that were in a similar chassis and everything that I could have done. You know, if I really wanted to feel that nostalgia. And of course the speakers that I got. Uh, new in box, new old stock. Again, still looking for a CRT. One of these days, I will find it. And then, of course, the place card here. Everything that I've done to it so far. Although, uh, the ATI Rage, it's out of commission right now. I'm not sure what's wrong with it. Uh, with Windows 98 specifically, if I try to install drivers, it just locks up the system. Uh, it locked the system up while it was installed. So I figured, let me remove the drivers, reinstall them. It will not. I'm not sure what's wrong with it. i got to try and diagnose it. So right now, it's got the uh, Voodoo Banshee in there for the time being. Is it the Banshee? Voodoo Rush. Voodoo Rush. Yeah. Uh, so I've got that in there for now just to be able to use it still. So. And then lastly, we've got my two laptops that I've got out right now. The MacBook 1, 2006. It's the Core Duo first Intel MacBook. And then, of course, what we've done to it. And I need to address the optical drive again because it is not properly reading disks. I think I've got a spare that I can put in there, but we'll see. Otherwise... There's that. And then the last retro computer that I can show off today is the PowerBook 3400C, complete with brittle plastic, as you can see there. There's also a crack on the bezel itself for the display, too much flex in the hinge, and well, y'all know how that works. So, but here's what was done to it. Basically, just a hard drive replaced, and that's it. I like this machine because it's a good bridge machine between old and new, because this has a hot swappable CD-ROM drive and a floppy disk drive, I can create a 100K floppies on here for the classic Max. But I can also transfer software from more modern computers to this via CD-ROM drive. Now it does have Ethernet on there as well, but there's no uh, support for SMB networks, and I don't really have an AFP network available. I kind of do, but it's kind of wonky, so I won't really rely on it, but there's that. So all in all, uh, I'm happy with how this came out. I am going to be making some additional changes and modifications at some point. Uh, like I said, I need to get a bookshelf of some sort for the box software as well as the magazines. Don't know where I'm going to put it, but we'll see. Uh, Got to figure out, like I said, where to make room for my other PCs and things like that. As well as future expansion because my collection's probably going to grow at some point. Maybe not as uh, fast as it has been, but we'll see. One thing I did not do, and I said this earlier, is I did not paint the walls. I do not want to paint these. When I first moved in, this is the color I chose for the home office. I had no idea that I was going to be doing anything even remotely like this. Had I known, I probably would have just painted them like a light gray or something. I did think about, and if I remember, I'll try to put that in the video here, is just creating like an accent wall, at least here. If not here as well, I found some pretty neat like 3D foam tiles uh, on AliExpress. I mean, they're everywhere, but they're pretty affordable on AliExpress. And just getting those and attaching them and kind of giving like an industrial look, kind of like a 
brick look. I would paint the mortar lines like a grayish color just to give them a little bit of uh, contrast because they're otherwise just pure white, but that's what I'm thinking of. But even just getting the two walls done is going to be a couple hundred bucks at least, so I've already spent enough on this. <laughs> I mean, each desk, let's see, like I said, what were these, like 55 each, so that's 110. The shoving was like another $15, $20. That I think was 60. This desk was 40. This was 40. And this little, they call it a child's dresser. I'm like, yeah, I'm just using it for storage. I think that was another 40. And that's on top of all the little things that I got, like the LED lights and everything. So yeah, if you want to do like something like this, it's not cheap. And uh, I know a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll just get like the steel shelving and just line them up and put all the retro stuff on there. And from a space standpoint, way more efficient because you can show a lot more. I mean, heck, even just if I had just gotten a bunch of these or similar, I kind of probably, you know, made it look better and made better use of the space. And also, I think my neighbor is mowing the lawn, so I apologize for that. I'll try to filter that out. But I still like the way that looks because it's more of a clean setup. It's not, you know, super cluttered, super messy or anything. And like I said, I'm still going to be making some changes and stuff like that, which I will update you guys on. So uh, let me know what you guys think. I know this wasn't a super exciting video, or maybe it was for you guys. I'm not sure. Uh, I had fun putting it together, this whole room and everything. I'll probably have a little bit of fun editing it. I'll probably have to re-record re some footage, but we'll see. So let me know what you guys think. If you guys have your own little retro collections or anything, talk about it below. If you have your own YouTube channel or other social media, can't put links down in the comments, but you can always say, hey, look me up on here at this and, you know, show off your stuff. So uh, otherwise, thanks all guys. I will catch you later.